we got it. I am so excited to be here. I just did not realize what an amazing group of young people y'all have. They are just most impressive. They are, just thank y'all. Thank y'all for raising such good young people. Thank you for having youth leaders that are willing to uh, just reach out and steer these youth in the right direction. We are so excited to be here. My name is Kathy Abernathy, and I am what they call the Prayer Mobilization Coordinator for the High Country. And my husband is Dan. He's been our drop-off team leader for years, and uh, so he'll be talking to you a little bit later. But we are just so thankful for this church. We are thankful for your gifts. We are thankful for how you embrace Operation Christmas Child. And we just, we just marvel every year. Uh, we laugh when we know that we don't even have to have a team there when Church of God is getting ready to bring their shoe boxes. They bring their own team. And I mean to tell you now, before they leave, all those boxes are cartonized. They don't leave any for anybody else to cartonize. And we're just, it's just a joy. I remember one of the first years y'all came in, and uh, we'd had a couple come in, and they had like 16 shoe boxes. And Dan just asked them, you know, off the top of his head if they included their shipping in the boxes. And the lady said, shipping? She said, if we have to put shipping in the boxes, we can't do the boxes. And Dan said, don't worry about it. The Lord will take care of it. So the next church to come in was Sparta Church of God. And they said, okay, here's our shoe boxes, but now we made our check for 16 more shoe boxes than what we have. And Dan said, do y'all know what you just did? And they're going, no. And he said, he told them about the lady and her 16 shoe boxes that she couldn't pay shipping for. And Sparta Church of God, by God's grace, walked right in behind them and paid their shipping. Just... <clears throat> but y'all are amazing, and we thank you. And we are so excited to have Arena here with us this morning. Arena Creek is uh, what we call a full circle speaker. Arena is from Russia, and um, she is going to come and share her story about when she received a shoebox and what it did to her heart to change who she was and what she has become in her life. So, Arena, would you like to come on up, please, ma'am? Good morning. Dobre utra. My name is Irina Creek, but I used to go by Stepanova Irina Vladimirovna. So, next time, maybe you can introduce me as such. <laughs> Uh, I was born in the former Soviet Union uh, to a family of farmers, and I remember the beautiful place where we lived, and uh, it was just rolling hills and the countryside with lots of farm animals, and I have a lot of wonderful memories there. But some of the difficulty was that my parents were alcoholics, and uh, they had some drug addiction as well, and so we just didn't have a lot of money to begin with and they wasted the little bit that they earned from the farming um, on their addictions. So it just made our life uh, quite a bit tough. I remember seeing some of the neighboring uh, children and how they had these little cute skirts and, and hair ties and shoes that fit and they matched and they always looked nice and clean. And I began to notice those differences with me and my sister and how we looked uh, we didn't even have shoes on our feet, uh, and so things like that uh, was just quite common in my childhood. I remember some nights we didn't have much to speak of for a dinner. Uh, like one of my memorable evenings was when mom brought home an onion for us to eat, and she peeled the onion and just passed around the layers, and I thought that was very impressive, uh, big meal because that onion had so many layers. So I just remember feeling like, wow, tonight we have a lot to eat. 
And, you know, I'd just like to share those uh, parts of my childhood with you to give you an idea of where I came from. And, uh, of course, that is not my life today, by God's grace. But many people still live like that and worse. And so it's just an insight of how some people live. And that is the reason why we are here today and what Operation Christmas Child does each and every day is to reach people who are in dire need of outside help. Now, food and shelter and clothing is one thing, and that's certainly difficult and sad for a lot of people, but spiritual need is the greatest of all. And Operation Christmas Child actually does both, just like Jesus did. He, go, he went out and met the people's physical and spiritual needs at once. And I, I really appreciate seeing in the Bible many, many lessons about giving. And there's obviously a power in giving. You know, it's not so much about having things. It's just about that expression of giving. So it's not so much about what you give, but it's how you give it, the heart that you give it with. And that's really what meets the need of that person. It's when that true, sincere care and love is given with the item. That's when it actually means something, and that was my experience. Uh, we have a slideshow for you, but I can't see which slide we're on, so let me step over here for a minute. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So right here, you can see, can everybody see me all right? Okay, I'll just stand right here. So this is the type of house that uh, my family lived in. It was just a small one-room little shack, and it doesn't have any plumbing or anything. We went uh, to an outhouse to use the bathroom, and we went uh, to the well to get our water. And it's just a very small community. So this is just a picture I found on the Internet just to give you an idea and a, a map of my home country. And here is a picture of a kind of a church that uh, my home country has, many, many of these beautiful churches. But back in those days, the services were in Latin, so it didn't really make a lot of sense to me because I didn't speak Latin. Okay, let me uh, show you the next slide is uh, one of the orphanages that I lived in. Uh, my sister and I, um, we, we were left at our home a lot by our mom and dad uh, because of their addictions that they had. You know, sometimes they would be under this influence. We would see them on the side of the road. Uh, and sometimes they would be locked themselves in inside of the house so we couldn't come in, so it was already difficult. But one night when my dad was in jail, uh, my mom was left home to take care of me and my sister, but she had an errand to run. So although she was sober, but she left us at home by ourselves and said she'll be back later that night. Well, the difference with this night of us being left alone is that our mom never returned. And to this very day, I don't know what happened to her, but God certainly knows. But because of that, my sister and I were taken to an orphanage. It wasn't this one, but uh, we went to a, a different one first. And in this first orphanage, we experienced some abuse and verbal and physical and sexual, you name it. It was a very tough place to be. Now, I share all of these things with you today, every hardship, as just mere facts to you. Because the Lord has done such a restoring work in my heart that I could stand in front of you and share every detail without any issue. And that's the power of the Lord. But I do want to share those uh, details with you just to give you a clear picture of the kinds of children that your church is touching all around the world. And so I remember living in this orphanage and feeling so alone and misunderstood and just not cared for. Uh, all of the children felt that way. We were just 
so uh, oppressed that we were even afraid to speak to one another because, you know, we all just felt like we all were on our own. And one day something happened to me and I just felt so down. I remember laying there and thinking, I don't even want to live anymore. And at this point, I was probably about six years old. And this is the time that I didn't know God, and I didn't have my parents. I didn't have caregivers. I really had nobody to speak with. Um, and this understanding and peace came over me. And I didn't know what it was but to, at that time, but today I know that was the Holy Spirit. And this understanding that came over me and said that, the trouble that you're going through today will pass away. And the Lord had me look back. He pointed out things in my life that I have already overcome in my past. And said, see, you don't even care about those issues anymore. But when you were going through it, you thought it was the worst thing. And now you think this is the worst thing because that is going on presently. So the Lord taught me a very valuable lesson, which is in God's word, yes. is to not worry about your trouble. Wow. And that was before I ever knew the Lord. And so I share the story to let you know that God is there for us. It does not matter what we're going through. He is with us always. He knew us before he laid the foundations to the world. And he was there with me during those times when there was nobody there for me. And, you know, the Bible says even the rocks will cry out if nobody else will worship the Lord. And so God will always manifest his strength in our weakness no matter what. If you are the child of the Lord, he is with you always. But as people of God, we have an opportunity to be the hands and feet of the Lord. If there was someone in this orphanage at that time, God could have used them to come and speak to me. And so it, it's, um, it's a bittersweet story, you know. I thank God for being there for me, for teaching me when there was nobody there. But I know that God loves to use people to, to be there for one another. And so in the next orphanage, this one, there were hands and feet that were there for me in the name of Jesus. And that came in the ministry of Operation Christmas Child. I was 10 years old at this time. And so this is a picture of me right there, the short one on the left, and the black and white picture. And my sister is standing there. Uh, she's just a year and a half older than me. Her name is Katya. And this was the very year we received our shoebox gifts. Now, we had no idea anything like this was coming. It was a complete surprise. In fact, the day actually started out as an ordinary school day. But the teacher came and said, the rest of the classes are canceled because of a special event. That's never happened before. So we already knew this is going to be big. But we had no idea how big. Uh, so I, we went into the gym. and. I never forget that sight of boxes uh, that were beautifully wrapped with, you know, Christmas paper. It was just so exciting for me to see. And I thought, wow, could it possibly be that those boxes are for us? And I remember pausing to say, oh, no, don't even dream that big because we've never seen anything like that before. But they did. They, in fact, gave a box to every single child in our orphanage. And we had over 130 children from the ages of 6 to 18 years old. So by God's grace, we all received a special gift. And not only that, but we heard the gospel presentation. And in those days, it was just a short, uh, you know, 15, 20-minute presentation, and we did not receive any literature. But today, children get to receive their whole uh, booklet about the gospel, and they're invited for a discipleship program where they get to learn more about God. And at the end of that, they get to receive a Bible in their very own language. And so we are just so thrilled that the Lord has taken uh, Operation Christmas Child to this point 
Uh, but back in, in the day when I received my box, all I heard was the gospel presentation, and that was enough because the Holy Spirit touched my heart in a powerful way. The message that I remember was uh, this lady, she was saying, um, don't you feel the burdens on your shoulders? And she went on to say how every single person has burdens on their shoulders, like uh, some unforgiveness or just any bad thing that has happened to you that burdens you, that makes you feel bad or sad or lonely or angry. And I thought to myself, well, yes, I have a lot of burdens on my shoulders. And they talked about Jesus. And they said, he is so strong that he can carry all of your burdens on his own shoulders. And because it, the reason it feels so strong and so heavy on your shoulders is because you're not meant to carry that huge load. So it's simply on the wrong shoulders. You have to give it over to Jesus, and he will carry it for you forever, and you will be free. I was so excited. Like you were talking about earlier, isn't it exciting? The good news is exciting. Yes, I was just so excited. I wanted to give it all over. It was just simple math to me. It's too heavy for me. It's not even heavy at all for him. Give it over to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> So I decided to do just that. We were invited to pray, to begin our relationship with the Lord. And I remember uh, going outside, and I got a handful of leaves, and I said, God, if you are truly listening, like they said, would you give me a sign? I said, Lord, I have this handful of leaves, and I'm going to throw them up in the air, and would you have them blow away to the left uh, just so that would be a sign that you hear me? And sure enough, the leaves blew away to the left. So I, you know, that might be silly, <laughs> but I've never been to Sunday school, and I didn't know much. I just wanted to be sure that God was listening at that very moment. And, you know, you might call it a coincidence or whatever that the leaves went away to, to the left at that moment. But let me tell you what was real. My heart was filled with hope and joy, and faith, and only God can provide that, and that really is, that is the power of God. We, we can't see him, but we see his works all around us, and he began to work in my heart since that very day. Well, in that moment, I prayed that if he was listening to me, I had, I had a big prayer request, you know, I had a dream in those days, living in the orphanage. I dreamed of a family. Uh, but that was such a big dream that really all of the children probably wished for. But at that very moment, when I knew that God was listening, and I thought back about that message of uh, how Jesus came to earth to bring us all back to the Father, and I realized that God is the God of adoption, and he's the one I need to talk to about this dream of being adopted. So I did. I asked the Lord this big, bold prayer, but I believe it was the Lord who actually planted that, that prayer point in my heart. You know, the Bible talks about uh, us praying in faith. You know, sometimes we pray in doubt or in fear. You know, I have this trouble coming up, so let me go pray because I'm scared. Is that in faith? No. We need to pray in faith boldly. That's referring to God's word and saying, the Bible says, I will be with you. Amen. I believe it. You know, that's, there's a big difference when we pray in faith. And just to give you a small example, let's say you are praying this morning that it will not rain. This might be a bad example because it did rain. <laughs> Uh, but on your way out of the house, you know, you believe that God heard you, and on your way out of the house, you grab an umbrella. That means you did not believe because your works did not match up with your prayer. <laughs> uh, but there is a big difference in praying in faith, and I just thank God for, for teaching me that uh, along in my life and for many other valuable lessons 
And so that was the first one, one of those prayers in faith. You know, I truly believe that I was going to be adopted. As crazy as that sounds, as unbelievable as that might be for a child in an orphanage, knowing that only, and I've only seen just two kids in my whole time living there being adopted. It's a rare thing. And the Lord made it possible. There's a family in Florence, South Carolina that adopted me and my sister. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is the God of miracles. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has always been a God of miracles, and he will always be a God of miracles. He loves to manifest his strength in our weakness. That is what he does. That's why we need to apply our faith. It's because that gives God the opportunity to manifest himself in us. You know, our trouble are given to us as opportunities. And the Lord has taught me that very valuable lesson in such a wonderful way. Uh, my husband and I were um, praying about going back to uh, this very orphanage where I was adopted to. And the Lord has opened up the door for that. Um, and actually, if you go to the next slide, you can see, first of all, a picture of the very day that my sister and I were adopted. So in the background, there's uh, wings of the airplane and this wonderful couple here, uh, John and Carol Sims. I call them my mom and dad since uh, 2002, by God's grace. Uh, but yes, the Lord uh, was working in my heart all those years uh, going to church in America and learning more and more about God. I received my very own Bible, and I just had all the opportunities in the world to learn more about the Lord. And I remember the day the Lord spoke to my heart and said, now it's time for you to go out and share what you've learned. I said, where should I go, Lord? And he led me back to the very orphanage where it all started for me. And I just, you know, I wanted to be sure. Again, I'm just that kind of person. I have to be sure is the Lord speaking to me. And I, at first I brought it up to my husband. He said, of course, that sounds good. We can definitely do that. I thought, well, we can't go empty-handed. I want to go do something for this orphanage to express uh, our love and care. And I remember thinking, okay, what would I do if I could... If I could do anything for the orphanage, what would it be? My dream was to rebuild the playground in the orphanage uh, because when I was there, it was already ruined and they just didn't have the money to replace any of the playground parts. And so as a child, I thought that would be the one thing I would really appreciate upgraded or you know updated would be the playground. But I wasn't sure if that was just me thinking as a little child or if it's truly God leading me to do that. Maybe there's a bigger need that I'm not aware of. So let me go and pray. Well, I like to listen to uh, a man called T.B. Joshua. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him. But they do a lot of wonderful works of charity and that kind of thing. And I just get very inspired by them. And I, so at this moment, I felt so just unsure. I thought, let me turn on, you know, and listen to Emmanuel TV and see, you know, just get encouraged. Do you have something like that where that you just really like to listen to a certain pastor or music just to lift you up when you're just down? And that was one of my moments. I felt just so shaken and unsure. Is this from the Lord or not? So I turned on Emmanuel TV, and guess what they were doing at this very moment? They were rebuilding a playground, an orphanage in the former Soviet Union. <laughs> That's a rare project, right? But they were doing I couldn't believe my eyes. And I just knew the Lord was with us uh, on this project. So we began to pray in full faith and expecting God to do what he has promised to do. Now, it seemed impossible, a lot of those things, in, but God is so faithful. You know, that's the one thing he, I've learned. God will never let me down. Anytime he leads me in prayer, even though it seems crazy or expensive or unrealistic to other people maybe, to him, 
you know, he loves to work miracles. So if it seems impossible and he led you to do it, that's where he is manifesting his power and he is glorified because the unbelievers can see that this is beyond our doing. Well, so I decided to call the director of the orphanage and say, we would like to come and in the name of Jesus and to help this orphanage do the, the, you know, rebuild this playground. First of all, the man on the other line uh, was the same director that raised me in this orphanage all those years. He's still there. <laughs> it's so amazing how teachers and people in schools, they stay forever and never leave, never retire. And so that's the same case in my orphanage as well, apparently. And I said, this is what we plan to do. He said, we have a greater need. We need to rebuild a, uh, or, or build afresh a shower facility. He said, do you remember when you were in this orphanage and you walked uh, a ways to, to this bathhouse where the orphanage paid a sum of money for all of you to get a bath about twice a month? And he said, they closed that facility. So now there's nowhere for the children to take a bath. And uh, the orphanage has never had hot water, has never had a shower facility. And so they just put up a few portable showers, and that's all the children have. But there are many kids from the age of 6 to you know, 18 years old, and there's just not enough shower facilities. And he was just so upset, saying that it's his responsibility to teach these children good hygiene, but they can't actually carry that out. And so he said, if you're coming here to want to help the orphanage, this is how you can help. And I thought, oh, no, but the Lord has already confirmed with, about the playground. So I went, went back to the prayer closet, and I sensed the Lord saying yes to both. So I called the director and said, we're going to do it. He said, do what? The showers or the playground? I said, we're going to do both. <laughs> and he said, wow, you must have a lot of money. I said, no, we don't have any. <laughs> I said, well, we have $1,000 because that's all we had in savings at that point. Uh, and we did some math and, and you know, ca called some uh, construction folks and got together a building plan. And it looked like it was going to cost uh, together, everything, about $22,000. And I said, we're going to pray and trust that the Lord will provide this money. And he said, how are you going to do that? We're just going to reach out and tell our friends and family about it. And it, we just had six weeks to do that. And by God's grace, you know, anything is possible. In the matter of six weeks, my husband and I raised over $40,000. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you know what? In the middle of that building project, as if you've ever had a construction project, you know it always costs more than you initially expected. Well, just the shower facility cost $22,000. But we also had a gift for every single child, Bible for every single child, and more. And, oh, the, of course, the playground. And so it was really a lot of money that we were needing. And the Lord just knew exactly the amount. And so he touched the hearts of the people, and it was possible because of God's grace. And so when we went over there, all of the projects were able to be accomplished. And I actually have some pictures for you from that. So next slide is a, a picture of the orphanage. And right here in the middle is my husband kicking the soccer ball with the kids. And that was just so precious uh, for me to see him interacting with those kids. Even though he doesn't speak the language, the love and care came across very clearly. And those two girls holding the boxes, they're full of Bibles. And uh, I remember actually after the whole project was over and we came back home and I prayed to the Lord and said, what was your favorite part of this whole project? Because we did so many things that you led us to do. What, which one was really, you know, your favorite? I don't know why. It was such a silly prayer to ask the Lord, but it happened. And the Lord said it was the Bibles in the hands of those children. And I thought, oh, of course, that makes sense. God doesn't do anything without his word. 
But then the Lord reminded me a few weeks later about that very same answer. It's when I heard on the news that my home country passed the law making it illegal to give out Bibles and to share the gospel. And he let me know that was why it was his favorite. It was because he knew well in advance what was going to happen, and he made a provision. And I think that's pretty amazing. You know, all those years I was going through trials and tribulations and wondering, does anybody care about me? Why me? Why this? Why that? All the while, God was just working it all out for the good. And he had all of those children in mind. So he chose me and said, I'm just going to let you go through some of this, but I'm going to take care of you. You will not be damaged by any of this. I will carry you through, and it's for my other children. And that's exactly how God works. So let us not focus on today's trouble because it will pass. And let us think of others who God is working it all out for. So we suffer in the name of Jesus. And so let us be grateful for those opportunities because, you know, God... He doesn't just leave us in our suffering. He is there. Just like when I felt like I couldn't do this anymore, he was there right immediately and said, you'll get through this. Remember how you went through this, this, and this, and you survived? You will get through this also. So as a child of God, we have nothing to fear. If God is for us, who can be against us? No one. And the Lord is indeed with us. It's just a matter of faith. If you apply your faith to the truth in God's word, mountains will move, and the Lord will be glorified through those trials. And so let me show you in the next photo this old, horrible-looking building that this orphanage has had on the premises for many years. I remember going there and thinking, oh, what a horrible building that is. And that's what it looked like this whole time. But this is the very building that God used to uh, turn into the brand new shower facility. And right here is one of the shower cabins that the kids used for, you know, the year and a half until they had this brand new shower facility. So the next photo, maybe one more, is the children standing in front of this locker room style showers, giving thumbs up and approval for the brand new shower facility with hot water. Praise the Lord. And wow, the Lord is so good. And the director told me that one of the kids, uh, because we were already gone by the time they had the ceremony of opening of the shower facility, he said, one of the girls said, I thought miracles were real. But today, I got to witness one for myself because she's been dreaming of having a shower facility at the orphanage also. So God is just, you know, he's the miracle worker, and everything is just interconnected in in the body of Christ. And it's just incredible how he works simultaneously all over. And the next photo is of the old uh, playground. As you can see, it's just a frame of wonderful playground that used to be but today uh, during the time when this was taken it was just a framework um, of a playground and next picture one more is of the brand new playground as you can see the children are enjoying that year round by God's grace okay let's go to the next slide I would like to finish with uh, this wonderful picture of my family and remind you that once I used to be a lonely orphan. It doesn't even sound right to me. It was so long ago, I could hardly even remember that, you know, because the Lord has healed my heart completely. And so today, I'm a part of this family, this growing family. And not only that, I'm a part of the royal family of God. And you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. 
the Lord is so amazing. He has done it again and again in my life. And I believe that one of the key things for a believer is, is to acknowledge God of the good things he has done in our life. And the power of a testimony, it's, it is, it's quite needed in, in our lives. You know, I've heard many testimonies who, that have moved me to the next level of my faith. And I pray that today has been one of those days for you. There is such power in sharing the truth. The Bible says it is the truth that will set us free. So I hope there are some burdens that you have given over to the Lord, knowing that he is able to carry them, realizing that it's too heavy for you. Give it over and receive the free gift of peace and joy from the Lord. And let us go in that peace and joy and give to others as we have been. Let us continue to run this race until the very end. And let me finally close with you uh, by sharing what was in my shoebox. Because I know that some of you are probably wondering, what were some of those items that were my favorite? You might be surprised. My favorite item was actually a pencil sharpener. <laughs> it was in a shape of a little dinosaur. And I've never seen anything like it. I loved that little toy. And actually, part of me was disappointed that my toy had a hole in it. Because <laughs> I didn't know what it was for. Until somebody came along and stuck a pencil inside of my toy, and they cranked it, and it came out sharpened. And that's when I realized how creative the American people are. <laughs> They hid that razor blade inside of my toy. It's amazing. So I didn't have to use a knife anymore to sharpen my pencils. I was just so thrilled to have a pencil sharpener. And I got my very own hair clips and a notebook and many wonderful things that I treasure um, to this day. Some I have kept and others I left behind at the orphanage when I left. Uh, but all of them were very special to me. And I would say one of the biggest gifts from, from the actual physical gifts, I would say is, uh, I mean, the, the most meaningful ones were the letters and the photos of the families that packed the shoeboxes because it gave us somebody that we could kind of connect with because a lot of us didn't have anyone that came to visit to the orphanage. I was only visited one time in all of my years at the orphanage, um, by my dad until he disappeared completely, and I never knew what happened to him either. And so many of us just don't have anyone to call our own from the outside. But when we received those shoeboxes, we were able to say, I have a person that knows me or that I know from the outside. And they, there are messages of hope and love in those boxes that say, you know, I'm praying for you. I love you. God loves you. you. We cannot underestimate the power of love and the power of giving. God is working out his plan in the lives and the hearts of his children all around the world. And we get to be a part of that. That is awesome. That is reason to praise the Lord and to celebrate today. Well, I just want to give you a big thank you on behalf of all of those children around the world who have come to Jesus because of you and who will come to Jesus because of you. And today, you get to see one of those children, but later, you will see all of them as we join together for a banquet as one big royal family of God. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Was that not amazing? I am only going to take about two seconds. Uh, she mentioned the greatest journey, and the children go through this 12-week um, uh, lesson here, and in the back of this, one of the things that's so amazing 
is on the next to the last page is a page where the children write in nine names of people they will pray for and share the gospel with. So your shoebox potentially is actually reaching 10 children, not one child. And then they also receive a Bible in their own language. I brought an American one. I've got one in French, too. I used to mess with the kids at some churches and ask them to come read the scripture that we were going to be focusing on. And, and you always picked on an older kid because the little kids, you know, they're not going to know. And they get up there and they're cool and they go, uh, it's cool. But this is such an amazing program. And Arena didn't have this in her day, but the children today are getting it. And they are they meet under trees, they meet in a shack, they'll meet anywhere until finally somebody builds a church that they can go to in many places. So thank you again. I'm going to let Dan talk to you for just a half a second, and um, then we'll actually let you go, maybe. Good. You did get that. She's going to let me. <laughs> she will not stop me have something I want to share with you. Uh, anytime that we've made presentations, uh, and when you've come into the uh, Methodist Church at the drop-off location, you would probably see a face attached to a box. And we didn't originate this, but I've asked Arena if she would come up here and be a real face when I'm giving you some a report on what you've done and what has happened in the United States and around the world with the shoe boxes. It won't take long, but it's very important. But keep in mind, we've tried to put a face on a shoe box so that it means a heart for Jesus. So, Arena, if you will stand in for that box, I would appreciate it. I didn't realize that a shoe box could produce an evangelist. <laughs> but we've got one today. I just, I haven't heard a sermon like that in a long, long time, and I really appreciate it. Uh, your church in 2018 uh, packed and delivered 526 boxes. You, you did that in 2017, the exact number. Uh, since uh, the past six years, you've given 2,064 shoeboxes. Now, Kathy just mentioned a child that going gone through the greatest journey adds nine names. We're looking at 20,640 in God's math, in God's math, potential contacts. Um, in uh, 2018, we had 1,927 boxes collected at the Sparta United Methodist Church. Uh, and during, let's see, for the past nine years, we've collected 13,491 shoe boxes. That's 13,491 children in a large number of foreign countries. That is... 13,000 arenas. Amen. I mean, this is live. Yeah. Uh, in uh, 2018, there were 8,801,607 gospel opportunities collected in the United States and four territories. Again, we're looking at 80 million potential. God's math is, and you sort of shared enough about it, uh, he's not He's not challenged by those things. He'll give you what he wants to give you. Um, around the world, there were 10,623,776 gospel opportunities. This is the most important thing that I can say. In 2018, children going through the greatest journey that accepted Christ 
was more than 2 million children. Now, that's greater or as great as the population of Charlotte metropolitan area, if you can imagine that. Uh, this, is, this is great stuff. There's about 50 arenas in the United States. And in Sparta, in Sparta United, Sparta United Methodist Church, Sparta Church of God, God has blessed us to have one of those 50 to come and share her testimony and preach to us. She doesn't know that she was preaching, but she's got that evangelistic spirit. Um, I do want, how many of you have brought boxes and worked with us in the uh, Methodist Church? Raise your hands. I want to, okay, now, I have a, a man and a woman over here. Troy and Sandra Brown, if you would stand up, Troy, and those of you that raise your hands, do it again, because they are going to be taking over the responsibility at the Methodist Church, but they're not going to get rid of me, uh, and this is going to be the man and woman that you're going to be working with, delivering boxes to, and like I said before, uh, to both of you, you don't need to worry about filling out a schedule for workers on Monday because around 1.30 on Monday on the collection week, this group will be bringing in their 600 boxes this year. Where did I get that? That number has been on my heart for some time. And I'm issuing a serious challenge because this is an amazing opportunity. I'm 86 years old, and I want to see this church before I leave this earth at the thousand level. I mean, I really do. I don't, I'm not brave enough to challenge some churches for that because they won't do it. <laughs> I think you guys will. Pastor? We appreciate you guys for letting us be here. Uh, if you want to come over and take over this mic and close in prayer, however you wish, uh, and we want to pray for Arena as she's driving back to the, well, Blowing Rock area. Boone, yeah. Boone okay. That uh, the road will be clear and that um, she'll be safe. This is the first time we've ever met, and I feel like she's a sister. I mean, yeah. We can pick on one another back and forth and enjoy it, you know, and I like that. Amen. Can you give the Lord a big hand? Amen. I appreciate the offering today. Uh, thank God that to help kick our young people off, we was able to raise $2,015 today. Can you say praise the Lord? Will it be all right with the elders if we go ahead and make that militia so you just put 3000 from, you know how to work it, so that it's like $3,000 or width, and I don't know how much we've already raised. So we should have right at $4,000 headed towards the go. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. The Lord. This was so wonderful today. It's a wonderful gospel message. And we're so thankful for what God has done today. My heart is blessed. Whatever you're facing today, God will make a way. What a message. What a message. Let's just stand for just a moment. I'm not going to hold you long. I'm glad you, you held them. I'm glad you didn't let them out at 12 because then I'd be in trouble. Because <laughs> they never leave that early. But what, whatever burden or care you've got today... The Lord tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 to cast all our cares, all our burdens, upon Him. Why does He do that? Because He's able to carry them. And you know what we do a lot of times? When I say we, I mean me. We cast those burdens, and before we get out that door, we've done took them back. But can we together this morning just put all those burdens on Him? If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today, and I trust everyone here does, but if you don't know him today, there's no greater time than right now by faith. It's all by faith. It's not by works, but by faith. 
to believe and trust in Him. Can we do that right now? Father, we just come to you. We thank you, God, for, for what you've done today. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful messages that we've heard today. We thank you, Lord, that your word is going forth, that you are accomplishing the things that you want to do in this last day. Lord, use us. Use us as a church. Use us as a vessel. Use us here and into the uttermost parts of the, your kingdom that we might give forth the word of Jesus Christ and that your love might shine through us, Lord. I pray, God, that you would use us and help us to be what you would what you've called us to be. But right now, Lord, I, I want th this message to sink into our hearts. I want us to take every burden, every care, every matter that is pressing on our mind and let us cast them upon you. Let us know, God, that you will make ways where there seem to be no way. Help us to pray in faith and believe and know, God, that you're working out, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's for healing, whether it's for lost loved ones. Help us to trust in you and take this and cast these cares upon you. We thank you for it and we praise you for it. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. All right, let's ask the Lord to go with us. His hand.